Stephen Philip Typaldus was born March 23, 1957, in Pasadena, California, the youngest of five siblings. His father, Zissimos, was born in Chile and raised in Panama. He completed a master's degree in physics at the University of California, Berkeley, where he met and married Joyce Imig, Stephen's mother. They divorced in 1959 when Stephen was only two, but Zissimos continued to support the family until his untimely death by heart attack at the age of 51. Stephen was then 14. When Stephen was five years old, his mother married Harvey Weaver. Stephen spent much of his childhood out of doors and developed a deep and lasting relationship with all kinds of animals, particularly snakes and reptiles. To say his childhood was unusual would be an understatement. In addition to playing with snakes, he loved playing baseball and dreamed of being a major league pitcher. In high school, he ran track and field but his love of herpetology led him to pursue a degree in biology at the University of California, Riverside. Always wanting to do the best, he applied for the graduate program at Harvard and was granted an interview with Dr. Edward O. Wilson, one of the leading figures in the biological sciences of the 20th century. In college, he met Sherilyn Schaefer, a student at Loma Linda University. She was Seventh-day Adventist, and she encouraged him to look at a career in medicine. His brother-in-law, Mark Waters, was attending Logan Chiropractic College in St. Louis, Missouri, and his sister Melanie taught biochemistry there. He applied and began school there in 1979. He and Sherilyn were married at Christmas that year. Dissatisfied, he sought the advice of his mentor, Dr. Andresen, and with his encouragement, enrolled at the University of Health Sciences College of Osteopathic Medicine in 1982, two months short of completing his chiropractic degree. He joined the Army Reserve to help finance his osteopathic degree. His son Alex and daughter Brooke were born while he was at the University of Health Sciences in Kansas City. He graduated in 1986. And he completed osteopathic rotating internship at Parkview Hospital in Toledo, Ohio in 1987. He did a family practice residency at Mercy Hospital in 1989, earning the prestigious Resident Teacher Award, one of the first osteopathic residents in the AAFP program. After two years of emergency room practice in Maryland, 1989 to 91, the family moved to Yuba City, California. Stephen discovered and treated the first trigger band while there. The herniated trigger point came soon after, and in 1992, he discovered the continuum distortion. He went on to name his theory, fascial distortion model. He moved his family to Fort Worth, Texas. There he worked in several emergency departments and would visit the anatomy lab at the College of Osteopathic Medicine to develop and test his model further. He began writing and published several papers in the American Academy of Osteopathy Journal in the spring of 1994, which were further republished in the British journal The Osteopath in the spring, summer, and autumn of 1995. Needing more time to write and to develop his theories, Dr. Tipaldus moved to Brewer, Maine in 1996. His family followed him in 1997. There he established a clinic for orthopathic medicine and began teaching interested physicians from across the country and around the world the fascial distortion model. It was during 1996 that he wrote the prototype of his book and called it Orthopathic Medicine, the Unification of Orthopedics with Osteopathy through the Fascial Distortion Model. Only 50 copies of the prototype were printed and most of them were given to students in the course. It was while reading the initial prototype that Marjorie Caston, his trusted assistant, came on board and began a long and successful working relationship that ultimately ended up in the production of four editions of the book. 
Without the Bangor Letter Shop and its owner, Irv Marsters, the publications of the books would not have been possible. In March 1997, Dr. Tipaldis gave a lecture on the trigger band technique at the American Academy of Osteopathy Convocation. Later that year, he presented three-day seminars on the fascial distortion model at schools of osteopathy in France, Austria, Portugal, and Kirksville, Missouri. In 1998, the second edition of the book was produced, and seminars were presented in Ohio, Austria, France, and Japan. The second edition of his book was translated into Japanese and put into a Japanese-English version. In 1999, the third edition of the book was published and translated into German. Seminars were presented in Portland, Japan, Austria, France, and Bangor, Maine. In July 2001, the 10th anniversary of the facial distortion model was celebrated in Bangor, Maine, along with an advanced course. Following September 11, 2001, Georg Harar, MD, was asked to teach the Level 1 courses in Europe and in the United Kingdom, and Dr. Tipaldis continued teaching Level 2 courses, mostly in Germany. Kyosuke Tanaka translated the fourth edition of the book into Japanese and began publishing it in 2004. In 2002, after being very discouraged by disloyalty amongst some of his followers, he decided to shift his focus. He fulfilled a promise to his children by writing and producing a musical play about a girl from Maine who went to Mars. He not only wrote the play and all of the music, but produced and even directed it. This delightful family play, Maine Girl on Mars, was performed at the Grand Auditorium in Ellsworth, Maine in August of 2003. The songs continued to come, sometimes so fast that he wanted to run to the studio to record them so that he wouldn't forget them. His creative genius led him to produce six plays and hundreds of songs. He would have been in the recording studio on the night that he dropped while running sprints. Steve remained an avid sportsman and outdoorsman, playing baseball, hiking, and pursuing hobbies like his fossil digs in the Badlands of South Dakota. It was in 2004 that the special relationship between Dr. Tipaldis, the FDM, and Acoma began. He conducted seminars in February and June and was asked to lecture again in June of 2005 during the Acoma Summer Conference. He arranged an FDM international meeting so that his friends from around the world could join him in the friendly atmosphere of Alaska. It is said that Alaska and Acoma will always hold a special place in his heart because we here provided the warmest reception to him and the FDM. His friends and associates report that he would return from his Alaska seminars rejuvenated and revitalized and those of us who participated in his presentations will always be indebted to his impact on our lives. At the international FDM meeting, several representatives from around the world were present. Bill Smith, MD, from Boeing Corporation in Seattle. Georg Harar, MD, from Vienna, Austria. Kesuke Tanaka, from Fukuoka, Japan. And many concerns were raised about the future of the FDM. We present here a few statements and comments in closing. <laughs>